Probably not many of you have seen me do a clay sculpture before, but it's something I've been doing recently to help me, especially with figure carving, so that you can work out how much wood is needed and how much you need to take away and stuff like that. So I start off by doing a sketch of the size I want the figure to be, or the carving to be. And then I use wires to bend around in certain shapes on the body. What I'm doing here is drilling, drilling into a piece of melamine that I'm then going to push those ends of the wire into, and this is basically the legs. So then after we've shoved those pieces in, I get some foil and crinkle it up a bit to create more volume in a sense. And then I squeeze it around that part, which is basically the torso. Then I come back with some more wire and bend it around another sort of shape to act as the arms. And then I attach it with some smaller wire. There's lots of different ways to do this. You could just use a block of wood if you wanted and build the clay up around it or something, but you know, this is just one way that's particularly helpful. Ah. Oh, melty. Tray melty. That's French for very melty. I then get the uh, clay out of the clay oven, that makes it nice and soft, so you can see here it's quite soft. And then I can squish it onto the form. That clay oven is just a little wooden box with a 100 watt light bulb in it, just to warm up the clay. Just makes it so it's nice and malleable. Um, but as you could hear, I just said it was quite hot when it came out, and it can be quite hot and it can burn you if you're not too careful, because it can get really, really hot in there. Now I'm just building up to the feet, adding some little bits of clay on there. And what I'm doing while I'm doing this is just looking at some references. So I have a Pinterest board up on my computer and I'm checking out references, so at the moment what I'm looking at is the reference of a male, sort of a stocky male body, so you can see I'm sort of trying to form muscles there a little bit. I'm not being too crazy accurate because almost probably 95% of the body is going to be covered up. The only thing that's going to be opened up is the hands, that's the only bit you're going to see. So now I'm using this tool to just kind of shape the clay down here to make a shoe shape. And I actually looked up some Anglo-Saxon style shoes to help me figure out what to do here. What I'm actually making is King Raidweld, who was, or who some historians think was buried at Sutton Hoo. If you know anything about Sutton Hoo, the movie The Dig, uh, where they found the really cool helmet and a couple of other interesting artefacts. I'm basing this off him loosely, the guy that was found there. So I just flattened out a piece of clay there, and now I'm folding it around the leg to act as the kind of top of the boots, the sort of strap that goes around the leg, this bit of cloth. And now I'm just cutting out some little thin strips to go around to act as the kind of ties that they would get around the, the leg pieces. And we're not going for super duper accuracy here. I mean, if I'm honest, I probably didn't need these little straps and some of the other details later on. But it's almost like it helps me visualize what the I want the rest of the king to look like. You know, rather than just being really, really sloppy with it. So I'm trying to add little details here and there just to just to help me visualize what I want him to look like in the end. These are his trousers that I made. I see it just looks like a block. But this is one of the cool things about clay. And if you've never used it, I would encourage you to try it because it is so much fun. But when I got to this point, you can see I was trying to figure out how to bit that in the top because it's meant to fold or it's meant to slot into the kind of leg pieces, the lower leg pieces. And I figured out in the end, just about now, that I could do a fold. And uh, you can't do that with wood. You can't move it with your hand like this and make a fold. So um, that was a bit of a revelation to me when I did it. And uh, all these folds and things, I'm going to add as many as I can because carving folds and clothes with wood is really difficult, at least for me, to comprehend. It's It's strange. It's quite hard to figure out where clothes fall and where they bind up and crease and stuff like that. Here's another technique I've seen a couple of people use. 
There's a YouTuber called Dr. Garuda who uses clay similar to this and I've seen him do this technique to create folds in clothing so I'm trying to do that myself so it just starts off making like a thin sausage and putting it on there then blending it in to the clothes to try and make it look like a fold later on I use a drill bit to help me with this and you'll see how that helps now I'm making uh, another flat piece and for a rolling pin I'm using an oak dowel which was a bad idea <laughs> because it's got a lot of grain on it you can see it's picking up bits of the clay on there so it made lots of little gaps in the clay and stuff I don't really have all the best tools so I need to sort that out a bit and now I'm cutting this piece out to act as the jacket because he had like a big thick jacket on and that's what I like about this technique as well you can make flat pieces on here like this and then you know, push them around the figure or around the sculpture that you're going against so you get to have this kind of uh, more realistic look to them once you stuck them on because they're actually around a figure and that's why making some of the muscles and stuff is important because you want the clothes to sit around what the body is actually like underneath so that they sit properly I don't think I'm like an expert at this or anything I've only just started doing clay but uh, I've seen a lot of people doing that and it seems to work well. So here I'm adding these other folds, these little sausages that are just placed on there. And this is where I start using the drill bit to help me smooth them over a bit. There you go. And like I say, it's a lack of tools, but the good thing about clay, I suppose, is that there's lots of things you can just pick up and make into a tool, in a sense. They're not the best, obviously, like the oak dowel, but you know they get the job done to a certain extent. So. You see how that's helping those blend in to become part of the jacket. And like I said, the folds are something I really wanted to get on there because trying to carve folds and imagine them is so difficult. Now this is the cool bit, this is the helmet. So I just cut off a couple of little bits and stuck them on there. And if you don't know much about Sutton Hoo, I suggest you look it up online and search for the Sutton Hoo helmet in particular. This is a helmet that was found near where I live, about 30 minutes away from, I live, away from where I live. And uh, it was buried there in like the year 600 or something ridiculous. So we're talking about something that's over a thousand years old, well over a thousand years old. And it's just such an interesting looking helmet. Whether it was used for ceremonial purposes or whether he did actually take it into war, you know, into battle with him, who knows. But I think if a warrior was wearing this helmet, especially a king then it would look really menacing and quite quite like someone you would want to avoid so I think it would definitely do the trick and like I said the main idea behind this is to just have a clay figure that I can measure and use to help me carve things it helps me figure out how much wood I'm going to need to make the sculpture and then it helps me take all the measurements I need to figure out you know, how big the head is how far the arm, you know, how big the gap is from the arm to the side of the body, um, how far the legs are apart, where the feet place into the ground, all this sort of stuff. And all these little details I'm just adding to try and help me figure it out as I go along. Now, because King Raidweld was part of the Wafingas dynasty, Wafinga, uh, as I read it online, means kin of the wolf, I decided to add a wolf pelt to his back. Uh, this is something I just thought, you know what, let's just try and make a wolf type rug thing and then place it over his shoulders, that's the best way I could think of doing it. I tried to just make a wolf head and then build it on, but it was quite difficult, so we made this sort of wolf pelt looking thing. A couple of people on chat mentioned that he looks a bit fluffy, a bit like a sheep, <laughs> like a bear or something, and I agree, it's a little bit fluffy, but uh, it's okay, it's just to give me an idea of where to place things and where wood needs to be carved away and stuff like that when it comes to textures and things that's the kind of thing I'll figure out while I'm carving you know so he's going to be holding the shield in front of him so what I did is I got a piece of cardboard and I flattened a piece of clay and just cut out a circle 
so that the clay could then stick on the piece of cardboard so they remained rigid and then I started making all the little shapes for it because something else they found in the burial site was uh, all these little I wouldn't say trinkets exactly but these little emblems that you can see here were all found in there and they were part of the front of a shield so which is pretty cool I think I haven't seen another shield like that so that was quite interesting once again I didn't really need to put all those details on there but I just thought it would help me a little bit now this is the hand this is or we've already done the first hand that was the second hand I wanted to make sure I got those pretty close to the final shape because hands are just so difficult to draw to carve anything to do with hands and feet is just so difficult uh, there was a sword in with the burial as well so I made sure to make that one too and have it hanging off the side of his body I know it looks a little bit bent there but I did take away some clothes from the leg to help me out I also wanted to make this little pouch to go on the other side now I don't know what a pouch would be used um, for in medieval fighting you know while on the battlefield but if anyone knows let me know because I saw it pictured on a few Saxon warriors so if anyone knows what a pouch would be used for in a battle of this nature, of of, the, of that time, let me know because I actually have no idea. I tried to figure it out but I couldn't find out. Now to kind of cap it all off with the wolf theme going, I decided to make a banner to go behind King Raidweld. Also I don't know if I'm saying King Raidweld correctly, it might be Raidweld or something for all I know. So I made this wolf banner to go up behind him and stuck it on the back to sort of stand behind him just to show that he was, you know, kin of the wolf. And so, now that I've done the clay sculpture, what I'm going to do next is build up the wood and start the carving. So, later there will be a video of the carving of King Raidweld. So, thanks a lot for watching that, and I hope it helped you learn a bit and figure out a bit why I use clay sometimes. And I uh, hope I'll catch you soon.